Hayao Miyazaki, creator of Ghibli or Ghibli Studios, and more well known for that fake gif, gif of him saying that anime was a mistake, is the premier auteur of the anime world, and his works are fairly ubiquitous in the minds of Western audiences, even audiences generally unfamiliar with anime. Films like Totoro, Princess Mononoke, Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, and so much more. The most frequently referenced aspects of Miyazaki's works are his female protagonists, his themes of pacifism and ecology, and the high standard of quality of his animations. His films are also accompanied by depth and sound as well as visual, though with plenty of gorgeous soundscapes and iconic scores. For this video, I'm gonna take a little step back and explore the power of sound in a very early Miyazaki film, a pre-Ghibli film in fact, and the first film Miyazaki made in collaboration with composer Joe Hisaishi, who then went on to work with him for roughly 30 years. A film called Nausicaa, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind. Fun fact, uh, the manga that this film was adapted from was drawn by Miyazaki himself. Fun stuff. Joe Hisaishi, real name Mamoru Fujisawa, Joe Hisaishi being a stage name inspired by musician Quincy Jones, became connected with Nausicaa because his second solo album, Information, was released by a label that was part of the Tokuma Shoten Group, the company that funded the Nausicaa film. Hisaishi composed the image album for the film and through that got the job as its composer. The job was initially intended to go to a better known musician, but Miyazaki and producer and later Ghibli co-founder Isao Takahata were so impressed with the image album that they hired Hisaishi instead, which in my professional opinion was a great choice. Oh, in case you were curious, image albums are LPs created specifically for Japanese animations to give an auditory sense of the characters and the film's personality. The Nausicaa image album served two main purposes. It allowed the musician to realize what the music will be like later, but it also allowed Miyazaki, who continues to draw, to work while listening to the tracks. As is often the case with animated films made in Japan, most of the music Hisaishi composed for Miyazaki films was influenced by storyboards and other aspects of pre-production rather than the final film. Hisaishi describes Miyazaki as very picky and demanding with the same process every time they work together. And the process is this. Miyazaki, before handing Hisaishi a true screenplay, gives him a simple storyboard. He then introduces the characters, tells a bit about the story, and gives Hisaishi 10 key words. After that is done, Miyazaki and Hisaishi both get back to work, drawing, and composing. Within the first year of production, Hisaishi would then start composing based on what he was given by Miyazaki. After around a year, he's able to make the image album, which would be done before the film was complete. Andrew Osman profiled Hisaishi for Animation World Network, describing Hisaishi's strong sense of place. The pervasive electronic score after Nausicaa's title does more to establish the alien world than a dozen pages of dialogue. Osman also praised the way the soft notes blended with the chirps and cries of unfamiliar creatures creating a complex soundscape. The powerful sense of place Nausicaa's environment has, especially in the early scenes set in the Forest of Decay, is thanks to all of the meticulous work that went into its visual and sound design. The forest is thrumming with life to the extent that it's a tangible physical presence. There are quiet moments elsewhere in the film with sound effects that are not particularly stylized, like the simple intimacy of a small fire crackling and warm conversation. Jungle's poison. We know the poison cannot reach us here. Or wind and creaking windmills, making the forest insect sounds, which are heavily stylized, stand out, and causing many of the soundscapes of Nausicaa to blend the organic and the inorganic. Hisaishi specifically asked musician Tomoyasu Tote to cry with the guitar to express the anger of the omu, 
Guitar amps, effects, and techniques produce the sound that they make when enraged. From the outset in the forest, there are natural sounding whistles and clicks from the insects, accompanied by some kind of life giving off a vibrant electric hum. And later the small electric cracklings of a tiny baby omu, Nausicaa befriends in the flashback, is echoed by the injured adolescent omu she encounters later in the film, evoking the helplessness of one that she met as a child. I'm not gonna hurt you. Don't be frightened. I'm not your enemy. In other scenes, insects resembled muffled screaming, heard through a distorted radio signal. A roaring insect's jaws make a metallic clang as sharp as any sword hit. The same insect gives off metallic rusting. And then once in the distance, it instead sounds like peaceful and haunting wind chimes. Now, the giant warrior, rather than being electric or metallic, has from its introduction a realistic human heartbeat. The heartbeat synced with the flashback of the footsteps of the warriors roaming a raised earth, and later pulsing flesh orbs expand and contract quickly in time with that same beat. The giant warrior resembles a human, but a huge and gurgling, giving off long gasps as it collapses, roaring both as it causes a massive explosion and as it melts and dies. Sounds a lot like me when I get up in the morning. Haha. -ha. Hisaishi's work on Nausicaa is known for being eclectic, taking influence from various composers, along with a mix of Japanese musical traditions and international pop music, but dominated by synth and electronic sounds in a way seen as jarring when compared to his later works. Hisaishi said of his earlier, more experimental work, I did my best to find the most challenging way. That is to say that I did not really care to see the music match to the image, or if the music reflected what I thought to be the psychological content of the scene, an artistic ideology that applied less to his later collaborations with Miyazaki. At times, Hisaishi's score is used in scenes where one might expect sound effects instead. As Mashigo palm spores float around Nausicaa, there's a music and a quiet wind beneath it in place of any particular sound effects for the spores. And as Asbel and Nausicaa sink no. in quicksand, more prominent than the sound of the sand is a series of deeply jarring music cues, backward sounding, and all dread and finality. Hisaishi's eclectic experimental music and the variety in sound effect choices complement each other not only when overlaid in those scenes, but in the film generally. Symphony and synthesizer, gentle nature sounds, and harsh metallic bugs, a wide array of parts that, because they were chosen deliberately for individual impact, come together brilliantly in the service of an intellectually engaging and emotionally affecting film. A quote from Hisaishi, Without intelligence, there's no sincere emotion and vice versa. Sentiment is the indispensable element of truth and honesty. I am a sentimental humanist that likes to translate emotions. Much of the power of the overall sound design in Nausicaa come from striking juxtapositions not just in the type of sound used, but in whether sound is used at all, especially when using abrupt silences or when aligned with scene changes. The first insect noises are very early on in the film, with vicious droning breaking a relative quiet. Later, an elegant silence after Nausicaa witnesses an omu is interrupted by military planes powering through the skies, the planes having a violent, bass-heavy sound, with them again interrupting a shot of Nausicaa's village later in the film by physically crashing into it. That is an interruption and a half for sure. Another scene transition follows despondent villagers sobbing with militaristic drum beats, and another cuts from Asbel and Nausicaa laying peacefully to shooting streams and a pounding giant warrior's heart. Bellano applies the term punctuation, as in when film music controls the pace of a film and complements the visual image the way written punctuation controls and accentuates the written word. To Nausicaa, where it also builds cohesion between the different music types, he cites a type of standard punctuation in Nausicaa, a moment where music is used to emphasize something important, and a negative punctuation often following it used to add even more of a dramatic effect because of the resulting juxtaposition. An example he gives is when Nausicaa finds the Omu shell, where the massive awe-inspiring shell appearing is underlined by a sudden cut in editing, synchronized with a sharp mutation in the background music. A perfect Omu shell. 
with the silence following this appearance then serving as the brutal affecting negative punctuation. Nature sounds have a strong aural presence in Nausicaa, predominantly of course the sound of wind, because it is Nausicaa the valley of the wind. As Matthew Scott said in the South China Morning Post, for the worlds he helped create with Miyazaki, the composer says they often discussed how to portray the feeling of flight, which figures predominantly in the director's oeuvre. Says Hisaishi, many of his works have flying scenes, and flying has always been the dream of human beings. So I try to connect with this feeling of hope to the spirit of these scenes. The wind not only signifies nature and Nausicaa and the village connection with the environment, but is deeply integrated into her character as well. The sound of her soaring glider complements with the sound of wind, and she uses a small instrument called a bull roar to calm and communicate with frightened insects. This communication facilitated by the use of the wind itself. The sound of running water is also prominent in the film and associated with healing and purity, such as in Nausicaa's private sanctuary and when she's rescued by Asbel and the wakes deep underground. Tato. Humans and nature in Nausicaa are also connected through physical means, with their simple visual cues, Nausicaa's mask flaps resembling the insect wings behind her, for example, but also by visceral audio-visual connections, such as how blood is used repeatedly in the film. Not only is an enraged Nausicaa inadvertently stabbing Yupa in parallel to her letting a terrified fox squirrel bite her, but is blood dripping down her sword and onto the floor and echoing loudly mirrors the adolescent Omu, severely injured, with its blood shooting out in audible spurts, soaking Nausicaa's clothes whenever she tries to stop its movements. The tone of the scenes where sound connects human and nature varies widely. A pleasant bonding moment where Asbel, Nausicaa, and fox squirrel Tito all crunch on food versus the way enraged Omu stampede whistles like the wind, just as Nausicaa does. Then, when the situation becomes dire and the wind is gone, its absence after being present for so much of the film fills both the viewer and the film's characters with dread. And of course, there is the most powerful and memorable moment in the film. Its climax, the sparkling light, the haunting nostalgic singing, the swelling music, the beauty and the power of nature represented by the Omu. The wind whistles and Nausicaa glows, with her adamant struggle and her sacrifice all worth it. As Slattery said when describing a symphonic poem, Hisaishi adapted Nausicaa's score into Hear the incredible anti-legato restraint, remnants of Beethoven's slow march from the seventh pounds the scene passionately into the soul. That's a lot of big words. The importance of sound in Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, Hisaishi's score especially cannot be understated. Says Slattery, I love Miyazaki, but Hisaishi can often say in two minutes what takes Miyazaki to develop in two hours. This is perhaps hyperbole, but this perspective from a music critique underscores just how valuable and how often overlooked Hisaishi's contributions are not only in Miyazaki's work, but in the canon of film music as a whole. Or it could be just him slide digging Miyazaki. So whether you're watching Nausicaa, Laputa, Totoro, Mononoke, Hal, and more, take some time to listen and appreciate the music and the sound utilized in these films. And every time you get a swell of emotion from the score, remember Joe Hisaishi, and remember the power of sound. Thanks so much for watching, y'all, and let me know what are your favorite soundtracks in any anime, show, or film. And in classic YouTube format, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and press the bell icon too while you're at it, and stay tuned every other Friday for more video essays. Just to let y'all know, these plastic vines smell extremely bad, and I withstood all of this for you. That's right, you.